to your open source product might be like. This is the meme, Jim. So uh, it looks like Daniel Love added an Uncle Sam meme. He wants you to merge this. And then uh, add some stuff. So while you know, onto the fault I want you. And then, uh, oh, we updated it. This pull request is updated. And then uh, merge this or else. And then he applied it. And then he sees the pull request and he drops it. So, anyway, uh, open source can be fun too and not really boring. Um, I'm not talking about open source, I'm going to use this instead. Uh, today I'm talking about Redis, uh, going behind the keys. I don't know what that means, I was trying to make a lame joke. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, I am QRush on Twitter, or just come up and bug me afterwards or at the Hackfest. So, I work at ThoughtBot, uh, where we make web apps for every, everything from big companies to startups getting off the ground in Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, I know, I came to the wrong city for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, and we use Redis a lot for uh, stuff like, uh, we use Rescue a ton, we use it in a lot of our client apps and a lot of our internal products, which you may have heard of. Uh, Hoptoad, which is our app error app, it plus Errors, and you may have heard of this thing called RubyGems, so I don't worry, I'm not sure if you have, but uh, that uses Redis a ton. So, Redis can be used to make your site faster, but we're going to go a little bit off on a tangent there. Uh, what, so, what is Redis if you haven't heard of it? Um, it's one of those NoSQL data stores, and it's actually turned as an advanced key value store. So, other key value stores might be our uh, memcache, the okay, cabinet, there's plenty that I'm missing. Well, key, the keys are basically strings, the values are strings, usually. So there's no tables, there's no relations, there's no graphs, there's no documents. All you have is a string that maps to another string, and your database figures it out. Except with Redis, there's more than just strings at the value portion, there's many data structures. So there's actually six, technically there's five, I really think there's six. There's actually strings, counters, lists, kind of like arrays, sets, which are like our Ruby sets, sorted sets, which are named terribly, and hashes, just like our Ruby hashes. So Redis knows about all of those and can speak about those at a database level. So you don't have to bang your data into a table, you just store it in that same data structure that we're all used to messing around with. Right now, Redis stores everything in memory, so it's seen as, it's used very much like a cache, like memcache, so if it goes down, well, you're mostly screwed. But you can kind of get uh, more or less paranoid with Redis, depending on how, how uh, dependent your app is on it. So you can basically save the disk every so often. It's not full asset compliance, but you know that's how it goes. Uh, by everything in memory for now, that means there is a branch being worked on by the Redis guys that will allow Redis to write the disk by default instead of to memory all the time, which has a serious <coughs> performance loss, but also makes Redis uh, a lot more useful in other cases. So what is Redis used for? There's a whole huge array of what Redis is used for out there in the wild. I think the three big ones are smart caching. So for example, instead of just storing stuff as strings, let's say you've got a user's timeline on the site, that's a list. You model it as a list inside of Redis and it's a heck of a log caster. So we use that for a ton on both Hoptoad and RubyGems. It's also used a lot for job queues, so that same list data type can also be used to uh, basically push and pop jobs onto a queue, and then you can have tons of workers, hundreds of them, and they won't all contend over the same resources. Redis is inherently single threaded, so each command is going to be executed one after another, so that kind of atomic action is really necessary for a job queue. If you've ever looked at the internals of a delayed job, you'll see half of it is like just trying to make sure that workers aren't fighting over the same job. So Redis kind of just blows that all away at the protocol level. You don't have to worry about it. It's also used for a lot of high-speed analytics. So if, if you need to count a lot of things really, really fast, Redis can do that. Uh, a good example of this is on rubygems.org. Every time that you ever download a gem, so when you type gem install, we're bumping around, I think it's four different counters now, of uh, pretty much everything you, we, we, you would ever want to know about about who's downloading a gem or what version it is, etc. So that's really fast. If you've ever had to deal with row lockings and trying to increment a column in a MySQL table or Postgres, it's, this is a lot faster. So, however, Redis is a lot more than get and set 
And that's kind of what I'm talking about today. I'm kind of skipping over the basics of Redis. I would gladly talk to you about that, but I'm going to talk about some of the newer features that are in Redis and some of the kind of oddball things that are really, really useful in your apps. And that's uh, binary operations, which are new as of Redis 2.2, which I think was released uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, set algebra, and what you can do with the Redis set data types. Sorting, and then transactions, which are also, they're also very named really, really important. Okay, so binary operations. So Redis has strings as one of the data types. And those strings, they're, basic, they're encoded as a, as a UTF-8 string. And you can now twiddle with the individual bits in those strings. So I wanted an example to show this off. And I think one thing that we're all used to is the file permission bits in, in Unix. So if I make a file and then I run stack with this uh, wonderful command, I don't even know what that does anymore. I had to read through the whole man page to figure that out. Uh, it, gets, it pulls out the permission bits. So WRRR. So I can read and write to it, the group can read, and the world can read. That's like the default for this. And those are basically implemented as bits somewhere deep within the bottles of your system. So I want to get that out and store that in Redis. Now mind you, this is terrible for production systems, probably don't bang. Don't blame me when your system goes down because you use this. This is just an example. I think in practice, using Redis for permission bits could be really useful. Like, if, for example, if you want to make sure on your website if you've got millions of users that, let's say, one, you want to make sure that a user can make a blog post or not. And then you store that in Redis. And instead of a string that might be so many bytes, you store a bit, which is going to save you a lot of memory over but for right now, we're just doing this example. So here's some binary operations. So I wanted to pull this out using Ruby. And since I love Ruby, and I wanted to do that. But the first thing I wanted to do was, I'm not a computer engineer. I think I'm a programmer. So I need to kind of write out all of the bits I needed. Uh, I couldn't do binary math in my head. So I'm still at the point where I need to write out the 2, 8, 2 to the 7, and so on. So if we kind of model this as a binary, uh, number, right? So we've got a uh, WR, those, are both, those bits are flipped on, so we've got a 1. Each little column of 3 is a two, is a uh, tuple that can be boiled down to an octal number, so if you've ever done Shema 777, all these bits are on, everyone can read, write, and execute that file. But for right now, all I care about is that row, the third row down, so the binary number. So I've got that 110, 100, and 100. I know that's in base 2, I'm just going to say that because it's easier. So, I need that number in Ruby, and getting that out wasn't uh, immediately uh, obvious. But you can get it out uh, with file.stat. File.stat uh, basically returns a file stat object, and you can call it on a file, and then it gives you a mode. That mode, however, is not the binary number you were looking for. It was wrong. It's actually a fixed number, which is base 10, not base 2. So in order to kind of force it back, I used printf. I could have like done and with some crazy hex number, but I'm not that good of a programmer. So I just use printf. So printf with percent %b gives me back that binary number, so I get this guy back, which has a 1 at the front of it. I still haven't learned what that does. If you know, let me know. Uh, but at the end there, there it is. This is Unix. I know this. And the bracket doesn't show up as much as I want. But uh, so there it is. I've got, that, I've got those nine bits at the end, and that worked. So I want I want in, in the script as as I was writing it, I wanted to get those bits out. And I pulled out a little Ruby trick that I learned that if you haven't seen it, I think it's really gonna help you. So uh, I need to then store that binary string, that, that binary uh, stuff I printed out to standard out to a string. So I use S printf. So I now store that in the mode string, and then I'm using this little uh, method on string called scan. Scan is kind of like the really awesome cousin of spring, spring split. Because it can not only split strings, but you can also give it a block and do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. So I tend to use that more than splitting than split when I'm dealing with strings. So you can do scan, and then with a regular expression, I get a whack D, and then that gives me an array of all the bits I need. So those last nine are it, and then those last nine I can shove into Redis. Uh, I'm going to spare you the uh, really tedious free code of looping over 
all those numbers, which ended up being a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. So visually, this is what I want inside of Redis. I want, at my Redis key, which is at firms, colon, normal, this is kind of a common pattern with Redis we'll see a lot, is that there's a delimiter. So kind of at my firms namespace, I've got this file name. I could have used a underscore, I could have used a dash, a slash, whatever your heart desires, you can use. Redis doesn't care. Um, at that, I have this binary thing, and it's going to represent my file dimensions. So basically, at a certain offset, I'm going to set a value. And Redis basically works in this way. So I'm going to bring in the Redis driver, which is uh, you bring in the, Ruby, the Redis Ruby gem. I'm going to create a new instance of it that connects to the Redis server that's running at your local host. And then you set it. So I'm going to set it for the key at perms normal txt. My offset's 2, and its value is 1. Simple and done. And if I want to retrieve that back out, it's get it. So if I want to get the bit that's at offset 8, I'm going to, it's going to see there, and then yank that out. So that's pretty much the, uh, all, pretty much all there is to binary operations within Redis. Uh, like I said, if you're doing a ton of like, user permissions, or really flipping, you, you might be actually storing uh, booleans inside of Redis, you might want to check this out because it will save you a ton of memory instead of just straight up storing strings, or even storing an entire object serialized inside of, inside of Redis. Because, believe me, there's, it's really hard with Redis to save memory. And you probably want to do that as your app, app's lifetime goes on. Okay. <coughs> set algebra. So sets are, there's two set data structures in Redis. There's one that's a normal set. So in Ruby, in our standard library, we have a set, which works like we would expect a set does. It's got set math in it. It can only hold unique things. If you want to look up if something's in a set that's in order of, that's in uh, that's a big O of one, so you're only it's got basically a little hash table to figure out, hey, this thing is in the set or not. And Redis set works pretty much just like that. There's also this other weird child of Redis called a sorted set, which is the worst name data structure I think in history. Uh, really, I think it should be called a high score list because that's what it is. You've got a it's a high score list and that means it's a hash of strings to floats. So I really consider both of these in the set math part of Redis, so we're going to see how we can use both of those. Uh, just like this last example, I needed an interesting uh, use case for it. So I figured I would uh, watch people's tweets. Uh, I was, my original intentions were a little more nefarious than uh, then it ended up being, uh, I wanted to wa basically uh, watch or stalk all the speakers' tweets and see what they had said over the past, over the past few weeks. And uh, I was hoping maybe reveal some secrets, but it didn't work out that well. However, um, I ended up doing this anyway. And I used a really cool tweet street, uh, tweet stream gem by uh, Michael Blay, I'm sorry for butchering your name, um, that basically implements the uh, new Twitter streaming API. So whenever someone tweets with a given user, user ID, it will send me uh, that message. So once again, I'm bringing in my friendly Redis gem, and then I'm, I'm going to set a bunch of stuff up. I found all the speakers uh, user IDs with the Twitter API. It's really simple and kind of scary how easy that is. Uh, and then I start up a new tweet screen daemon. And uh, this, all this code, by the way, will be up on my GitHub after I get a chance to write Ruby, because I did uh, Ruby drive this presentation. Um, so uh, you basically start a daemon with, my, with your user and your password. My user and password is not in, this, in the script, I'm sorry. Um, and then you follow a bunch of user IDs. So I'm going to splat that big array into the, into the follow method, and then that basically makes event machine start up and says, hey, every time I get something from Twitter, I'm going to uh, yield a status object to this block. And that status object has all sorts of junk about that tweet. It has the last time they, uh, anything you want to know about that, about that tweet. The only thing I care about right now is the hand. So what that Twitter user's name was. So now that we've got my handle from all my speakers. Oh, by the way, it's not only just the speakers, which is one of the reasons this experiment failed. Uh, it ended up being everyone who ever 
mention the speakers, so I ended up tracking a lot more users than I wanted to, so my uh, st statistics were a little bit off. So, the redis part finally comes in when I'm going to do a Z anchor body. So, first of all, we've got this Z thing. Uh, like I said, the sorted set is the worst name based structure in history. Z, every Z command in Redis deals with sorted sets. I don't know why, but this means that the count sorted set, I'm going to bump up handle by one. So every time someone tweets, I am bumping them up in the high score list. So what this ends up looking like is something like this, and this is the results from, every, from I think yesterday, which uh, kind of count, uh, I have more stats as well if you're curious. So, for example, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Light here had 353 tweets, uh, Mr. Timmerman, uh, 340, and uh, so on, and so on. So, you basically get this, this big list. You don't, well, if you think of a set, right, you think of a set kind of literally, you think of it, oh, there's all these different elements. But sorted sets are really kind of vertical. You kind of see the string and then their score. Which is, a, which is a float internally, but it can be an integer for our purposes right now. So Redis basically stacks it up, and you can then query it based on uh, either the score or the rank in the list. So uh, Elite at the bottom is rank number, he would be rank number three, I think. But you can then query it from the bottom or the top, no matter how you want to do it, and we're going to see how that's done. So we also want to actually use sets in this set algebra example. So that status uh, text, the, the status um, from that tweet is in the status text. I'm going to split each word and then add each word everyone has ever said in the last few weeks to a set for their user. So I've got this words and then, so I have words and then a handle. I add in the set and I'm using the most depressing Redis command ever, sad. So uh, that will basically add that word into a set. The set, just like our Ruby set, is it will reject duplicates. So if that's the first time it's, uh, it's ever seen that word, it will return true, otherwise false, you get the point. So with that, we basically get these big blobs of things. These are randomly uh, chosen. Uh, I swear, I re this is really randomly chosen from these two authors, and I did ask them for permission. So, um, <laughs> so you basically get these. Uh, well, we would think of as arrays of unique elements, right? That's a set. So then you can do all sorts of math on it. Uh, for example, we can see the words that they both said by doing an S enter. This is actually, uh, I kind of, uh, I kind of uh, looped over this, but S enter, so this, uh, the command line up there, that's using Redis CLI and not the Redis Ruby driver. Redis itself comes with a little command line helper that you don't even need Ruby to start with. Well, as soon as you compile Redis, you get this little, uh, almost IRB-like tool to start messing around with it. So if, you did, if I did S enter and then with uh, Y, cats, and Z, then I get the intersection of, of both of the words they ever said. Sinister. So, yeah, not as sinister as I thought. So another cool thing is that you can also, so there's other set operations, but you can also store them into a completely new key. And this is a really common pattern I've seen with Redis, where you basically, take the result of a calculation, dump it into a different key, and then those original keys, there's action still going on the whole time. But you never have to worry about stopping the whole system to do that analysis. You just kind of bring it over to the new key, do the analysis you need to do while your system's still running in these other keys. So here's an example of that. So I'm going to use sunion store, which will do a union of all the sets I give it into this new key. So in, into all words, I'm going to store the union of these three sets. It can take as many sets as you get it, but I just want three. So I've got a, a, bunch of, a bunch of words that they didn't say this time, and then I'm going to store them into the all word set. The only repeated word is bar, so bar only shows up once in the new set, because it's a union. So in Ruby, that's actually really easy. So this example was actually, I was trying to figure out how many unique words everyone was saying. So, start on my, my Redis uh, driver, and then I'm going to get in this array of uh, all, the, all the word sets that everyone has. So I have this big users array that had everyone's actual Twitter handle in it. And then I'm going to splat that big array into SUnionStore. I really like splat, by the way, if you have a list. 
Um, and then, I, in order to get the amount of things in a set, it's not as straightforward as one, is, as one would think. So in real math land, we wouldn't get the length or size of a set, we would get the cardinality. So the Redis equivalent of the length of a set is S card. So if I get the S card of that all word set, last night it was around 9,000, I'm sure by now it's more. So that's uh, doing some analysis on a different key, and you'll see that all the time if you're, uh, if you're uh, dealing with Redis a lot. So back to that high score list thing. So here's an example of what that uh, high score list might look like. So this is our uh, sorted set, or our Z set, and we, it's basically, like I said, it's a hash of strings to loads. So Redis allows you to do queries on ranges on basically either the keys or the scores in, in the uh, sorted set here. So to do that, you would basically do Z range. Uh, I want the top three scores here. I want to see who tweeted the most. So I would use the rev range. Because for some reason, it puts the highest things on the bottom of the high score list. I don't know why. So it's kind of a low score list. I, I don't know. This is named here. Um, so the rev range will bring, will give me the last. It will go basically, basically from the bottom up. So from zero to two, that will give me the last three things. However, that only gets me the keys, it doesn't give me the scores. So if you want to actually see how many times they tweeted, it won't tell you that. It will just give you the straight up keys. In order to have it tell you that, you have to give it with scores. I don't know why I need to continually beg it to give it the data I want, but that's what happens. So hopefully you're, you're using 1.9, right? Who's using 1.9? Anybody? There we go. Okay, good. So that will work and compile, otherwise bring out our friendly hash rocket and, uh, and tack it on. So with scores, we'll pull out both the key and the score. So using this is pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to do redis.new, z rev range from the bottom to two up, so I'm going to the top three. And then I'm going to splat that array once again into, ha into hash brackets. The hash brackets method is really, really neat if you haven't messed around with that yet. So if you ever have an array that has an even amount of things to it, which this does, it's basically key score, key score, key score, so it's an even thing, that hash bracket method will basically create a hash out of that array. So if I splat that array into it, it knows what to do, it gives you a hash tag. So that's a really neat method that uh, I don't think enough folks use, because it's just not, number one's not documented, well, number two, it's kind of like, Tension hiding, I guess that's a good way to But it's still kind of neat. Alright, so there's a lot more set map that's available. Uh, there's intersect and difference on the normal sets. All, there's also the store version, I think, of both of those. Uh, the Z sets also have Z union and Z inter store. You actually, there's no Z union or Z inter, there's just the store equivalent. Mostly because the rest commands are kind of um, there's a lot more of those Redis commands along with the really neat interactive tutorial on redis.io slash command. So you can actually go in there on each different command. It gives you a little tutorial and examples, and you can type around and mess, and mess with it with a live Redis instance connecting right there. And uh, believe me, you can try to delete it and it will work. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so a third example of things that aren't kind of uh, normal with Redis is sorting keys. Uh, a lot of the questions I get when, we, when folks are trying to figure out, okay, how do I take this accurate record thing and model it in Redis? The first thing I say is no. And then I say, well, maybe you should look at this to kind of understand how to model your data. So Redis has a sort function that is pretty obvious in the way it works, and then it kind of uh, throws a curveball at you. So let's say I have a set of user entities. So I've got a set of five things, it just has a bunch of numbers that I've tossed in it that represent users in my set. And yes, it's unordered, I don't know why, it just is. So if I want to sort that, I just do redis.sort. Jeez. Um, so you can sort that, uh, you can do it uh, descending or ascending, you can also do it with alpha. Uh, the cool thing is that you can also sort it by another index, so you can kind of treat it as a separate index to pull out. So if I want to basically sort things by, you can call it a z-index, I really don't think it is, but uh, 
you can basically say, okay, for user ID 133, I've got 300 tweets, so he's the first one to come up. And user ID uh, 42 has 200 tweets, so he's the second one to come up. So you can basically treat these other keys as this kind of separate thing to sort by. And that's really neat. However, it also gets even crazier because you can toss in a uh, get option. So instead of just returning that original user ID's list, you can also retrieve an entirely different key altogether. And it's going to, just like it does with the buy option, it's going to replace that, that wild card with the values it gets. So since uh, user ID 42 has 300 tweets, he's first in the list, and Chad is the first result we get back since I'm doing a get with handle star. And so on and so forth for Joe and Matt. So it looks like he's got I had three minutes left, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna. I have another example here, but I think I'm gonna skip it in the interest of questions. Yeah. If you want to learn more about Redis transactions, which are none at all, nothing at all, like uh, SQL's transactions, then I'm more than more than willing to teach you. Uh, you guys have any questions for me? No, that was a bit fast. If you do want to learn about how this works and how to deal with the single thread nature of Redis, come talk. All right. I think that's all the time I have. Thanks, guys.